Namaste, everyone. So nice to have you here with me. This morning, before we started our practice, I wanted to talk just a little bit about the reasoning behind the practice. Today, we're going to focus on the energetic body, the, the body that we work with, with Tai Chi and Qi Gong and acupuncture and acupressure. And we're going to do that through our asana practice, primarily. And I want us to know just a little bit about this energy body, the, the five prana values. And you don't have to remember the names or anything, but I do want you to remember the function generally and why we're working in that area of the body. So there are five major values in the body. There are really 10, there are five other little ones, but the five major values, udana, this upward reaching air. And it's responsible for our speaking, burping, belching, singing, vomiting, our hearing, our, and anything that's coming in through our senses in this area, okay? That's the udana by you. And its seat is right in the back of your neck at, the, at this dimple of your chin. The chakra is vishud. So that's the seat of this upward reaching air, okay? The next vayu is called prana. So prana comes in and down, in and down. It also goes up to the brain. So it comes in with the breath, goes up to the brain, and down about to the belly button. It follows the pattern of the breath, in and down, in and down. That's prana vayu, and it's responsible for our breathing, for our heartbeat, for everything that's in the center part of our body with our organs functioning. The next value is samana, which is our, our metabolic energy. It's often called the unchanging air because unlike this one that comes in and down and this one that goes up and out, it folds in on itself. This one, I'm sorry for those of you who wanna know the chakra, it's, it's anahat at the heart center, back in the spine behind your heart. Samana value. It is our transformative. It's where we're digesting things. We're digesting our food. We're assimilating. We're absorbing our food. Our thoughts, the, uh, 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 gut brain, the enteric nervous system, our emotions. I have a gut feeling. So all of these things are absorbed here in samana vayu. The next vayu is apana vayu, our downward flow of air. And it's responsible for excretion, elimination, urination, menstruation, ejaculation, everything that's going out and down in the body. It's also responsible for keeping us grounded and stable and solid. It helps us to fight fear. So apana by you, that downward flow of energy from right at the base of the ribs flowing down. When we're sitting, it goes down from our seat. When we're standing, it goes down through our feet. So really grounding into the body. The last bayou is, is uh, beyond, beyond bayou. And beyond bayou is all of our circulation in the body, our blood, our lymph, all of the airs moving in the body. It helps with digestion as well, moving everything into the body, all of the beyond. I'll again tell you with their chakras. So Udana, Vishud chakra, Prana, Anahat chakra, Samana, Manipur chakra, Apana, Muladhar chakra. You don't need to remember these if you don't want to. Beyond in different texts, different yoga texts has different ones. Some of them because of circulation put it in the heart. Some of them because of the way that it comes out of the body as opposed to in, put it at Manipur. So it, it can be either way, all is good, all is good. But I want you to think about how we're using our body today in asana practice. I want you to think what values you're stimulating. Are you helping your body? Do you need to speak? Should be, you be working more at the udana value? Do you need to ground? Should you be working more at apana value? Where is your body today, and tomorrow may be different, but just when we set our intention in a moment, 
just setting your intention to actually work today with your energetic body, letting you feel where you are in this moment and asking yourself, how can you help yourself balance? And when we do our practices today, I will remind you what's the primary value being worked on at that particular point in time, or how the values are being affected. So for just a moment, find your comfortable seat. You can put blocks under your legs if you'd like, anything to support you. Don't leave your legs hanging in space or they will never release. Right now, they're like a little baby just being held going, why aren't you holding me securely? So hold the baby and hold your legs. If they've made it to the floor, great. And if not, give them a little support. They need the support. Nice, tall spine, elongated. Find all of your natural curves. Tall spine. Letting your jaw relax. It said the jaw is the seat of the will, the ego. Just letting it go for a moment. This morning, I'm gonna ring the bowl. And in that ring of the bowl, find Om. Find the beginning, the end of the universe, beyond everything, the way beyond space and time. Just listening to the bowl. bringing our hands into the heart, Anjali Mudra. Just letting your head bow for a moment. Gratitude. We have food, we have shelter. Practice gratitude. What else are you grateful for? And then thinking of your intention for the moment, your sankalpa, focusing it on your body, your energy. Where do you need to be today? Repeating it to yourself three times. And then slowly, as you inhale the breath, letting the eyes flutter open, and interlace the fingers of the hand and just push away. Just push, push, push. We're going to start right here with Udana Vayu. There is pressure now in the scapula, at the shoulder region. Just gazing out to the left, gazing to the left, taking your head as far as is comfortable, feeling the pressure at the neck region, the dimple of the neck. Take your gaze over to the right, gazing to the right. Head is to the left, gazing to the right. Keep gazing. The eyes may water, that's fine, that's good. Cleansing the eyes, Tratak. And then bring your gaze and your head back into neutral. Release the hands and the fingers for a moment. Change the interlace. Press out again. And this time taking our head to the right. As far as is comfortable, push into both hands evenly. And then take your gaze over to the left. Look as far to the left as you can. Breathe. Find your breath. And then slowly release the gaze and the head back to neutral. Release the arms, open them nice and broad. 
Good. Taking them back behind us. Pranavayu, working on the heart and the chest region, stimulating it. Shoulder blades are kissing in the back. Good. And let's again involve the head, the uda, bend the chin into the chest. Take the chin to neutral and then take the chin toward the ceiling. Don't let go. Come back into neutral, down again, neutral, and back. Come into neutral, down again, and neutral. Then release, and then a little bit of a twist over to the left, little tiny twist over to the left, gazing right out over your sternum. Don't take your head too far. Gazing right out over your sternum. And then release the twist. Notice the balance of either side or imbalance. And then as you inhale, begin your twist over to the other side. We just where you have the breath to resist again. Just looking out to the side. Working at prana, and you're even feeling a little stimulation in saman at the belly button, back in the belly. And then release the twist. This time involving our arms. Inhaling, coming up. Exhaling, headed over. Take your gaze over your left shoulder. Bring your gaze over your right shoulder. Breathe. And release the twist. Good. Arms up again. Overhead, reach. Reaching, reaching, taking the body weight out of the pelvic basket. Exhale, ground down through Apanavayu. Inhale, lifting up, moving as you lift. And then taking your chin out all the way over your right shoulder. Breathing. Notice the belly, hot. And then bringing your chin out over your left shoulder. One more breath and release. Letting the arms float down. And now feel yourself on the base of the body, just rolling around a little bit. You're rolling your trunk around your sit bones, around your pelvic basket. Go back, notice tailbone, side, sit bone, front, pubic bone, side, sit bone. Letting one roll up and back. And then head in the other direction, stimulating Apanavayu with Mula Darcha. Stimulate. Good. And then sitting up nice and tall, nice and tall. Let's take our legs together for a moment. And then you can stretch your legs out. I have my altar here, so I won't do that. Stretching your legs out in front. Good. And then sitting back. So we're trying to engage everything here. We have a little bit of tuck to our chin, otherwise our head would be like this. So we have a little tuck to our chin. We're gonna take some nice breaths. Our belly is taut. We're reaching down using upon, and we're gonna lift and expand into yawn. So hands can be underneath the knees into this modified boat. And this may be your pose, and your pose may be touching and releasing. Touching and releasing. It may be staying. You may straighten the legs. You may add the arms. Wherever you are this morning, no judging, engaging all the body. And slowly coming back to feet on the floor. We're going to do a few cat poses from here. So I'm going to hold on to the front of my shins and round the body. Tuck the chin into the chest. Belly to spine, and then inhale, come up and pull through. Notice how you massage all of the spine, innervating all of the vibes. Coming up, gazing up, curling, inhaling and extending, heart rises, exhale. Two more, inhale. Lifting, exhale, last one, 
Inhale and exhale. Good. And then come into a neutral place, sitting for just a moment with the soles of the feet together, just finding that also rooting down into Apanavayu, just rooting yourself down. Good, and then we're gonna stand, we're gonna do it slowly. And when you're getting into Dasana, I'm gonna go move the camera a little bit, but placing your feet firmly on the floor while you're down, just firmly on the floor. Find a nice spot, you can be on your toes, you can be on the whole foot, just a nice squat for a moment. Really stimulating Apanavai, the downward flow of energy. Grounding, stabilizing. And then from here, just begin to lift your bottom, put your hands above your knees, glue your elbows back close to your ribs, come up until your spine is virtually parallel to the floor, <clears throat> and then exhale the rest of the way up. Good, nice tall spine. Find Tadasana, find that pose right at the beginning. So finding your Finding your Tadasana. Releasing the arms. <clears throat> Rooting down through the feet. Lift the toes. Feel all four corners of the foot engage. Lift and release. Good. Breathing. Feel yourself growing tendrils through your feet, down through the floor, through the, through, the, through the floor below if there is one, finding yourself all the way into Mother Earth and curl your tendrils and ground, completely grounded. And then we're gonna inhale and come up to the ball of the foot and exhale, go down to the heels. Four times. Inhale, come up, ball of the foot. Exhale, come down. Stimulating beyond body circulation. Inhale, come up. You need a challenge. Try to look up right now. And exhale, coming down. One more. Inhale, eyes contract all the way up to the ceiling. And exhale, coming down. Good, breathe. Relax your arms, relax your bottom. Really relax your pelvic floor and your belly, your shoulders for just a moment because we're gonna engage everything and use it. So just for a moment, a little respite. Looking for these respites throughout the day. Finding peace in the moment. Soft muscle to bone. Your autonomic system has you, so wherever you can consciously relax, do so. And on your next inhale, letting the eyes flutter open. And then we're gonna spread nice and big and wide. So this uh, spreading wide already is good for beyond. You can see that this is expanding this space. Every time I externally rotate to one side, I'm stimulating up on, primarily on that one side more than the other. And when I gaze to one side, I'm stimulating Uda. And my breath working in that area and my belly pulling in toward the spine is stimulating all of the pranavayas. So we have our right leg externally rotated. Keep the left heel out of time. Keep the Sorry, you have your left leg externally rotated and kick your right heel out a tiny bit. And then bend the knee. Stack it over the ankle. Good. 
So finding that space in the body, shoulders roll them down and around, other direction. And then extend through the arms. And then taking your gaze out over your middle finger of your left hand. Take your whole right arm back a little bit as if you were taunting a bow. Breathing. We're going to inhale, come up, gaze front and center, and exhale, go down. Inhale, come up, front and center. Exhale, gaze to the side, lower. One more. Inhale, come up, front and center, and exhale, go down. Gazing over the fingers, release your arms, straighten the leg, unrotate. Rotate in the other direction. Spine is upright. No leaning. Upright. Kick out your left heel a little. Good. Nice and tall. Bend the knee. Raise the arms to shoulder height. Make some circles to the front or back. Then other direction. And then stretch the arms out and gazing over your middle finger. Three breaths, right there. And on your next inhale, straighten the leg, come up, look front and center, and exhale, release. Inhale, come up. Look front and center, stimulating all of the values. Exhale, release, belly to spine. Inhale, come up, gazing forward. Pelvic floor is lifted, engaged. Exhale, release. Inhale, gazing forward. And exhale, release. Release the arms, straighten the leg. Both feet back, front and center. Placing your hands right around your your hinge here. And then as you come over, take the whole trunk with you, hinging at the hip, gazing at the floor. We're going to do a twist here, also really engaging all of the values. From, from where you are, extend from the tailbone to the crown of your head. Don't lose that extension. So if you need a block, or a chair to keep you long, let's do that. So I'm gonna open up parallel to the floor, my left right arm. And then I'm gonna place the back of my right hand on my sacrum. And then I'm gonna do three opening twists. I'm gonna inhale, keep the hips and legs even, open and exhale. Inhale, open, exhale, close. Inhale, open, exhale, close. Reestablish the length, tailbone to the crown of your head, lift up your pelvic floor, pull in your belly. Now, placing your arm again parallel to the floor. This time taking the whole arm and the trunk with you, palm is facing the floor, very important. Come up. Push into the block or the floor and exhale, release. Find your neutral spot. Good. And then opening up the left arm. Palm is facing the floor. Just putting the back of the left hand on your sacrum. We're going to do three inhales and exhales. So inhale, twist, hips and legs stay even. Exhale, release. Inhale, twist, exhale, release. Inhale, twist, and exhale, release. Arm reaching out parallel, palm facing the floor. We need this external rotation on the arm for this to feel comfortable. And then inhaling and opening up. Legs and hips are even. 
and slowly exhale, release it. And then just letting yourself go for a moment. Wide-legged ragdoll. If you have a block, place it at the crown of the head or at the hairline or on the forehead. Any stimulation into this area is really good for both Udana and the mind, the mind. Blood is now rushing down to the brain. And then begin to engage hands onto the floor or the block or the chair. And then take a nice inhale. Make sure you're long, tailbone to the crown of the head, and then exhale all the way up. Good. Nice and tall. Wiggle out your hips for just a moment. Just wiggle. And then we're going to externally rotate again the left leg. So I want you to think about the energy in this part of the body. Root down, ground down. Zip up some tight jeans. Expand through the chest. Turn your head to the side. Bend the knee for your two. And then reach, 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 but don't collapse. Open your heart and chest toward me. Open your arms out to the side. Again, just opening your arms out. Good. And then slowly putting your left hand on your leg, elbow headed back behind you, right arm coming up and then over, finding a long line of energy. Breathing. Don't collapse into that arm. Just use that arm as a stability. And then release the arm, straighten the leg, come up into a modified triangle. Breathe. Open heart, open chest. All the volumes being stimulated. You can take your gaze up, center. Or down. Coming back gently all the way up, release the arms, and we're going to travel to the other side. <clears throat> so kicking out your left heel a little and externally rotating the right leg. Upright spine. Good. And then let's open the arms wide. Gazing out over your fingers, and then slowly begin to bend the knee, warrior two. Don't lean. We're going to lean in a minute. Right now, we have an upright, long spine, the whole spine, long. And now, lean, 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 grabbing something over there, taking your right hand, putting your hand on your leg, with your elbow behind you. And then left arm coming up and over. A long diagonal line. Try to feel that energy from the middle finger all the way through the outside arch of your left foot. Don't collapse into the hand. Breathe. And then we're going to open the arms wide and straighten the leg. And then arm, arms to triangle position with no weight on the bottom arm. Trying to stay strong, brave in the face of all that we're facing today. Coming back to warrior two. Release the arms. Straighten the leg. Come back front and center. Wiggle your hips. And then head it over slowly, gently. One more time. A little pressure on the crown of the head. If you have your chair, your block.
And then gazing out at the floor, bringing your spine relatively parallel to the floor. <clears throat> We're gonna go back into our squat. So you're gonna heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, maybe another one, whatever you need to do, get your feet and your knees in the same direction. I see someone writing in the chat window. I do not see that at the, until the end of class because it's only me and I'm, I can't go to the computer. Squatting, rooting, grounding, focusing, downward flow of energy, upward flow of energy. Feeling the pressure at Saman in the belly button. Feeling the pressure and the downward flow, feeling the opening in the heart, bring it to the back of the body, spread the back ribs. And then as we twist open to the right, just opening, twisting, and bringing the arms back into Namaskar, hands and arms. And again, opening out to the left, and back into Namaskar. Those of you who would like to take a bind, feel free to do that here. Just diving your fingers down, reaching for Artha Malasan, half rosary pose, but also just being out and open and beautiful. And coming back. And one last time, opening. And coming back. Good. And then releasing your hands down for just a moment. Again, letting that apanavayu root you down into the ground. And then slowly reach back. We're going to make a little bit of extended dandasan for just a moment, extending your legs out in front. Reaching through the feet, heels on the floor. Do not lift your heels, that means you're hyperextending your knees. Keeping your heels firmly on the floor, draw the toes back to you. Engage the muscles across the ankles. No muscles, tendons, ligaments. And for just a moment, see if you can take the soles of the feet together. Just a little bit of foot work here. Keeping that padasan, that foot pose, Keeping that pose for a second, just reaching the soles of the feet together. You can lean back on your arms, just breathing. And then peel the toes apart. Again, reach them toward you. Now take down just your little toes. Keep your big toes reaching toward you, little toes reaching toward me. And then bring them back, all of them. And then take your little toes toward me, big toes back, all the, all the big toes down. Good, and then nothing. And then bring them back to touch each other as much as you can. Working on ankle flexibility. It helps our feet, it helps us ground, it helps us have a more stable walk. And then peel them apart, put your feet on the floor, not too far because we're gonna reach up into reverse table. So I'm gonna place my hands with my palms facing you might prefer with your palms, with your fingers facing away from you. You can decide which is most comfortable. My feet are far enough away from me that when I lift my hips off the floor, my knees will stack over my ankles. That's very important. Lift. This is often called Nabi Darshan, which means doing gazing at your belly button, Nabi. So just looking at your belly, Tucking your chin into the chest, belly is lifted. Press into the arms, press into the feet, press into the legs. And then slowly begin to lower your bottom somewhere back close to your hands. Good. And then sitting up nice and tall. So again, to stimulate all of the values, we're going to do our seated cat pose one more time. Holding on to the shins, exhaling, pulling the belly to the spine, curling the chin into the chest, rounding, and then inhaling, coming up. 
opening nice and wide and big and down. follow your breath you may be faster or slower no judging One more. Good. And then coming back into Dandasan, reaching the legs out in front. Good. So many of our original yoga poses are seated poses. Why? Because the word asana means seat. We were looking for a comfortable place to sit in meditation trying to get the seat, the legs, the hips, everything happy with an erect spine. So, so many of the original poses are seated poses. So we're gonna do a few seated poses. Also the best thing to really fight fear and ground us down, working through the very bottom of Apanavayu, sending it down into its own abode, okay? We're gonna start with Ardha Matsyandrasa. So lifting your right leg, you can leave it here, you can cross it over, wherever it feels most comfortable to you, and then putting your right arm back behind you. I'm not twisting yet. My, my torso is still right front and center. Good. So I'm gonna do that three times of twisting. I'm gonna inhale, twist, exhale, release. And I'm using my elbow in the back to help me open. I'm going to inhale, twist, exhale, release. One more. Inhale, twist, exhale, release. So this time, really press into the sit bones, press into the heel that's on the floor in front. Press firmly into your foot. And then as you inhale, twist, and then perhaps you can take your elbow outside of your right knee. The Lord of the Fishes, Matsyendra. Letting your chin rotate all the way over to your right shoulder. And on your next inhale, rotate your chin a little arc up over to the left shoulder. Press through the foot on the floor. Keep engaged, legs and feet. Sit bones firmly on the floor. One more big breath. And exhale, release. Good. And extend that leg up. Just stimulated your ascending core. Good. Bringing the left leg in. Great. You can keep it here. You can cross it over. You can bend in your bottom leg. However you want to take this version of Matsyendra but your right leg is engaged fully. The right foot is pulling back towards you while the heel is firmly on the floor. Left arm back behind you. Good. Exhale, ground down through your sit bones. As you inhale, open. Exhale, release. Inhale, open. Exhale, release. Inhale, open. And Exhale, release. Good. This time preparing ourselves. Really press firmly into the hand and arm behind you. Engage the right leg completely. Left foot is firm. As you inhale, open. And then maybe the elbow of your right hand outside of your left knee. Keep your chin over your sternum to start. And then slowly take the chin out over the left shoulder. On your next inhale, arc the chin over the right shoulder. And on your next exhale, release the pose completely. Good. Just stimulating your descending core. Helpful for apanavayu, for grounding down. Good, reaching through. Just 
just coming over here to see who's been on the mat in the night. Good. Reaching through both legs. Press your hands into the floor, maybe the tips of the fingers. Tips of the fingers, hands, something really engaged or dandasan. And then bringing the arms up overhead, we're going to undulate three times toward our legs. Take a nice inhale, lift up, exhale, ground down. One more, inhale, lift up. And as you exhale, head forward just a little and bring yourself, scoop everything back. Exhale, lean forward and inhale, coming back up. Exhale, lean forward and inhale, coming back up. After those three undulations, you're gonna stay, bend your knees as much as you need to to release your hands to your feet, your shins, your knees, your thighs. Wherever your, wherever your hands are is perfect. So Pachimottanasana, westward stretch of the body. Most of us have to pick between the spine and the hamstrings. I pick spine, so I have my knees gently bent. I'm gonna tuck my chin into my chest since I chose the spine and round. And then placing the hands firmly on the floor close to my hips, instead of using my low back muscles, I'm gonna press into my hands and straighten my arms to come up. Nice and solid, good. And then release legs and arms. Relax your legs for a moment. Just wiggle them open. Good. Just sitting in relaxed position. Relax everything for just a moment. We're going to move into bridge pose. And I want us to do a little bridge prep first. So please watch. Don't look at the screen while you're laying down. That's not good for your carotid artery. You have the blood up, moving down into that area, beginning to pool. Do not do bridge pose with your head twisted to the side. So watch for one second the difference between bridge and bridge prep. So I'm going to do three preps. I'm going to come up. My arms may go overhead. If you don't have space, just keep your arms down. Exhale, release. Inhale, up. Exhale, release. You're just going to do that three times. But notice here, there's no bridge. There is a fallen something, but a, a tank couldn't get under it. So to do the actual bridge pose, I need to firmly engage my upper arms and my shoulder, make a horseshoe from elbow all the way across the shoulder girdle down to the other elbow. Press in, lift my sternum and take it toward my chin. I can do robot arms, I can interlace my arms underneath, I can just press my arms into the floor, whatever takes you there. So slowly find your reclined position. No looking at the screen. You can't mess up that badly, so don't worry about it. Look at the ceiling. Put your arms down on the floor, at least your upper arms. Create a horseshoe, elbow up to the shoulder, shoulders across, and elbow, shoulder down to the other elbow. Press that horseshoe into the floor. And then inhale, lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, lift. Exhale, release. And this time we're gonna go up into full bridge. Inhale, lift. If you're on your menstrual cycle, just lift and go right back down and start an early Shavasana. You deserve it. So now I've tucked my chin into my chest and my chest into my shin. So instead of tucking my chin, I'm going to look back a little bit at the wall behind me and then press into my feet and really lift up through the body. Arms can be anywhere along the floor or underneath you, hands are grasped. Good, and then lower your bottom, roll out your shoulders, rest. Keep your knees bent. 
stay in this neutral place. No tucking your knees in yet. You've got a little lumbar curve back underneath you. And then for those of us who are going to continue inverting, if you're on your cycle, please give yourself this longer Shavasana. Those of us who are going to continue inverting, we're going to put the block underneath our sacrum, lift our legs into the chest, and then lift the legs toward the ceiling. You can, this is your time to do your headstand, shoulder stand, anything you might want to do as an inversion. This is working on all of the pranavayus. This pose, Viparit Karani Mudra, is a seal. It's a reverse posture seal. All of the bandhas are applied naturally. All of the values go back to their abode. All of the chakras are stimulated. And because of the inversion, especially Sahasrara, the crown of the head, breathing. Relax your energy. These inversions, you should be able to find the breath soft and smooth and even. Relax your jaw. And then those of us who are in Vipari are going to gently bend the knees into the chest, taking one foot at a time down to the floor until we're in almost a bridge, lifting off of the block if we had it there, releasing our bottom to the floor again, finding your lumbar curve, don't push it into the floor. And then slowly letting the body extend into Shavasana. Just letting go. Do a scan of your body. Shoulders, belly, legs, arms, face, trunk. And you relax your jaw, letting the lips part slightly. Letting go.
And then slowly and gently find the breath in the body. Don't change it. Look for it in the belly or the chest. And then letting your hands go to your low ribs, palm of the hand on the low ribs, fingers on the belly. Just notice if the ribs are spreading more or the belly is rising more. No judging, just noticing. And we're going to control the breath for a moment. Pran, prana yama. Yam means control, restraint. We're going to restrain and control the breath. So on your next exhale, as your belly pulls toward the spine, feel your fingers go down underneath you. And then inhale into the thumbs laying on the ribs. Exhale. Thumbs release, all of that curls back into space. Inhale. Keep the belly stable, breathe into the ribs, exhale. Inhale, ribs expand. Exhale. Try to lengthen the exhale. Inhale, ribs. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, spread the ribs. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four. Last one, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, let it go. However long it goes, all by itself. Maybe it goes to 16, 20, wherever it goes. Gently bending your knees, putting your feet on the floor, lifting your hips off the floor, shake them out a little bit, and then shift them over to the side opposite me. Shift them to the side opposite me, and then roll over toward me. Curl yourself up into an embryonic C curve, all curled up safe and secure. Breathe and remember your intention this morning, just remembering it right here in embryo with new beginnings, new possibilities. We left corpse pose way behind. And then begin to press the floor away, spiral yourself up, coming up nice and smooth and gentle. And again, finding your comfortable seat. Breathing. Soft, shallow breath. Just, just enough to sustain. Just enough to sustain. Letting our hands, the dominant hand on top, thumbs gently touching, resting them in our lap. Eyes closing softly, preparing for a short guided meditation. Notice where you're making contact with the floor. Surrender into that base. Letting your spine lift, occupying a little bit of space above your head as you relax into the breath. Just tiny, soft, shallow breathing. Imagining a candle flame at the heart. 
You may see yourself in a mirror and the candle flame shines brightly at your heart region. Keeping the mind on the fire, on the flame. Noticing how the light grows and begins to fill your whole body until in that mirror, you see a light filled body within your skin, all of your body is filled with light. Keeping the mind on the light filled body. And now imagining that light beginning to seep out beyond your body until the light encompasses the whole of the mirror. You can barely recognize yourself in the middle, the flame a little stronger in your heart space. But the whole mirror is now filled with light. And now imagine, if you will, it goes beyond the mirror into the ether and that each one of us feels each other's light. We can feel it in our body and our mind and in our soul, bathed in the light of each other. Find strength in the light of the union of the yoga. Slowly and gently bringing your hands into the heart where the light is behind them. And letting that light recede slowly until you capture it back into your heart space. And then hold it in the very palms of your hand. That light is there for you whenever you need it. The light of the soul. The light of the whole. The light of all of us together as one, our true nature, one. Remember your intention, repeating it to yourself three times. And then letting the intention slip out of your mind, down into your heart, symbolically out of your heart, into the palms of your hands, and then lift it up and just let it go off into the universe. Everything in the universe is there for us. Bringing the hands back into the heart. Hari Om Tat Namaste.
gracias a Dios. Gracias a Dios porque mientras tenga trabajo, no hay no hay no hay que ver qué vamos a hacer. Okay, so we're here together, and this is the time for any questions, um, any doubts, anything you can write in the chat, which I'm going to check in just a second, or you're also more than welcome to uh, unmute yourself on your microphone and uh, put your, you have a little red line, you get rid of the red line, you talk, and then you mute it again when you're done. Um, Everyone, oh wow, everybody is right there. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna go to gallery view so that I can see you guys. There we go, okay, good. So uh, let me know if you have any questions about the practice. Oh, nice, nice. Any questions about today's practice, about the values, or any questions about anything, anything we did together? Anybody? Those of you who've been studying with me for a while, I know you know your prana values, and uh, I just wanted people that don't really study that much the the energetic body to have that space and understand that every time they do an asana, they are balancing the whole pranic energy of the body, creating a higher vibration, making themselves uh, more peaceful and more at ease. Anybody can ask anything. Well, I'll tell you a little, Patty, you wanna, yeah. I would just want to say thank you so much because I have noticed such a shift. This is my third time with you, and I am so grateful for the shift. Thank you. I'm so glad that it's shifting for you. And that is okay. just the grace of the, I, the grace of God for me, the grace. Anybody else, anything about the practice? Because I can continue to tell you a little bit more, but I also would love to hear from you what's working for you. If there's anything that I should be doing differently. Today, I tried to do part of the practice close and part of the practice back. Did that work? If it did, you can raise your thumbs if you have them. <laughs> Good. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Um, my question, and hopefully to apply the next time, is that after you did the, the part where we could not, we should not have looked at the screen while you, after you prepped for bridge, I was not clear on what I was supposed to do after I prepped and before the bridge. I think I was not, I don't know if I was doing the right thing, but when I sat up because I thought I wasn't, you were doing something that I, different than I was doing. So, <laughs> so all we time, did, yeah, all we did was bridge. And then we went into Vipari Karni Mudra, the topsy turvy pose. Right, but before that, we, after bridge prep. All we did was bridge. I didn't do another thing. I may have not done it for a moment because you weren't supposed to be looking at me. <laughs> maybe, maybe the part of, maybe it was bridge prep that I wasn't doing properly. Yeah, it was just hips up, hips down. Hips up, hips down. That's it, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. thank you. Yeah. And yeah. there is no wrong. Anything that your body tells you to do, the nice thing about doing this in the privacy of your own home is that nobody's looking, nobody cares what you're doing, right? You can just modify, and when I say something, you can say, oh, I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna go big, or you can say, oh, I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna go small. Anything that really speaks to you, it's your practice. It is so not about me. It is so about you. <laughs> you just modify it, fix it, do it so that it really works for you, making everything work for you. And once you understand how the values, the energy of the body moves, which is why we do Tai Chi and Qigong, right? And why we do acupuncture and why we do acupressure, because we know that I can cut open a cadaver and I can't find their energetic body. But the, the, the people in Asia have known forever, literally forever, that that Qi, that pran, 
exist and they manipulate it and we all manipulate it and uh it's super important that we know that the the chakras are the center of each of those pranavayus someone was asking me the other day about chakra yoga it's the center of those pranavayus and it uh it's very very helpful for everyone to 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 know that every time they're really working the spine every time you do cat cow every time you're you push away from your computer and do a seated cat pose that you're really stimulating your own immune system to to come back online instead of like leaning over and hunched over and just opening nice and big and broad and then cur curling because you do need that curl after you open because you need that pose counter pose moving the spine letting it move like a snake which is where that snake is underneath it <laughs> that kundalini mama Silver, uh, ginger i have a question is it yeah. okay to do bridge pose if you have problems with your shoulders uh, it depends on what the problem with your shoulders is right like if the problem is not really your shoulders but your neck Anybody that has like a, 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 a bad neck would probably want to do it with a few blankets underneath and let the neck come over, right? So that your, your head, your, your neck is, the blankets come to about here, about an inch beyond your shoulders, and your head can be on the floor, and there's no pressure there for someone who has any, any neck issues, right? But the shoulders themselves, with bridge pose, you're supposed to be, supposed to be, there's no true supposed to be, but you're, we hope that your weight is primarily in your feet and your legs, the bigger part of your body, and not dumping into your shoulders, right? So sometimes we have to pull our belly to the spine, push our legs a little further, make sure we stacked our ankles, our knee, knees over our ankles, and just check our alignment, because sometimes we dump into the shoulders, and that we don't ever wanna do. But if you're really aligned and balanced, the shoulders won't have any more than probably 30 to 40, 35, 40%, may, maybe not even that. Your whole arms should have the, the, the weight and the shoulders themselves are just placed firmly. So you, play, you can play with it tomorrow if we do another bridge or even today, just after practice while you're nice and warmed up, just play with your bridge and see, if, can I get that out of my shoulders? Can I get that into my legs? Great, thank you. Yeah. Any other asana questions or any questions about the values? So remember, udana, upward reaching, and it's stimulated right here at the dimple of our throat. So when we do pranayam like ujjayi or bremery, when we do asana that has us turning our neck, when we do pranayama that has us turning our neck, we have some pranayams that have the four faces. So all of those are stimulating that upward. And I've had people that I've given them a, a, therapy, a therapy as um, just doing one of these pranayams because they've been blocked. You know, you can tell when somebody's blocked in that region because they're talking to you in one monotone and they really don't have any more because it's all clogged there and they can't move the voice anywhere. So that type of person, really needs working with udana by you and maybe they don't even know it but the best thing they can do is sing in the car sing while they're doing sing stimulate that whole area singing chanting um they're making all kinds of weird noises you know and the stimulation of back and forth side to side putting pressure into that area and then pran we're working fully in prime when we're doing our, our pranayama, when we're doing our breathing practices into the chest area and knowing that it's heart, the, behind the heart, back in the spine is uh, on a hut. So all of our cat pose and all of that. Our belly region, the, the samana vayu, keeping that energy really um, maximum function so that we are able to digest. Right now we really need good digestion, not just the food but all of this stuff that's coming at us in the news, we need to digest that material and poop it out because it is no need for that to be absorbed into our body. So we need to be really mindful of our 
our belly area, that whole area. So that stimulation is behind our belly button, again, back into the spine. And then going down to the very bottom, that apana vayu, it's the underneath between our sit bones, right in that tailbone area, right? That's our apana reaching down. Why these seated poses are so good for us to keep us grounded, stable, and, and functioning, right? So when you feel a, a little bit of a, a fearful thing, a good thing to do is just stand for a moment in Tadasana, pull your belly into your spine, relax the upper part of the body while the whole bottom part of the body stays engaged. Then slowly, after two or three breaths, relax the bottom part of the body and breathe, right? So just using your practice throughout the day, little tiny tidbits of it, so that you can really keep yourself healthy and happy and strong, really strong. Kamlesh? Yeah. Samia has a good question on chat. Uh-huh. You want to say it out loud? She's asking what uh, stretches or poses can help stimulate the vagus nerve. So the, the easiest one is for you just to lay down, interlace your fingers, put your hands on the floor, on, on your neck, and you've got your thumbs to the front, okay? Your thumbs are to the front. Why? Because the only reason we're laying down and keeping our head stable is so we don't move our neck because we, we have this tendency to start going like that when we look to that side, okay? So we're laying on the floor, pretend we're laying on the floor, and then I've got my eyes open and I'm gonna take my gaze to 9 a.m take it over 9 p.m. as far as I can get it all the way out. I may see my elbow, I may not. Let the eyes stay open as much as you can. Let them water, let anything happen that happens. Don't let your neck move. That's why you've got your hands firmly there because your face and everything wants to go with that eye really badly. But the key to the vagal nerve reaction is not to go. You can be there for up to one minute. If you get a gurgle in your belly or a yawn or any kind of uh, autonomic reaction, stop. That's fine. You don't need to do it any further. If you don't do it, then stay for the whole minute and then come back with your eyes into neutral and then take them to the other side. So eyes now headed over to 3 p.m. or 3 a.m., hopefully 3 p.m. Hopefully we're not ever looking at 3 a.m. So we're staying for the 60 seconds or anytime we get a little burp, burp or a gurgle in our belly or a yawn or any kind of autonomic nervous system thing. My head really wants to go to that side. That's why we're laying down so we aren't so tempted. Sitting up is even more tempting. and then gaze back into neutral. And then release your arms. Exhale. Don't you feel just a little calmer just doing that? Those of you who actually did it with me right now. Helps us center and ground. Okay, it's 9.15 and I wanna respect your time. Um, the videos are going up. I think they are on my, oh, funny, yesterday I wrote, I told you my, my um, I told you my email <laughs> and I said the word in Spanish, I'm so sorry. It's like ginger at casasanjuan.com.gt. Instead of at, yesterday I said arroba and everybody who speaks Spanish on the screen, bye Prisco. Everybody who speaks Spanish kind of knew it and went over it. So nobody told me they didn't know what the heck arroba was until someone wrote in the chat, how do you spell arroba? <laughs> it's like, oh my God. <laughs> so it's ginger at casasanjuan.com.gt. But if you go to our webpage, which is www.casasanjuan.com.gt, you will find there our um, a, a video channel. I'm not sure exactly where, but I know it's there on the page because NEO just sent me the links. And um, the first two days are like this, they're gallery view. And I really apologize, I didn't know any better. But yesterday and today 
our full on view until we get to this part, because I think we're talking and it's good to see if others participate and you don't need to see me big anyway, because I'm not doing anything except chatting. Hi, Sylvia. It's nice to see mom and daughter on the same in the same space virtually. <laughs> Two different spaces in the same house. <laughs> Okay. Before we go, could I ask you a, uh -huh. a techie question? Where on the screen would I see a place to write something? No, I don't want to, but I just want to know. Down at the I very bottom, just take your cursor I down to the bottom and it'll say chat. I'm on an iPad. Can I not do it on this? I don't have oh, a uh, One of you who has an iPad. It's, it's up in the right hand corner, the three little dots. Oh, got it. Okay. Thank there you, you Tanya. Okay. Thank you. Good. Now I don't see them till the end of class. However, you know I don't see them till it's Got all it. over, said and done. Right. Yeah. There's twelve of them there. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone. You're so welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah. It's just kind of hard for me to always keep up with the chat because it's it's far away. I mean, the screen is not close to me. <laughs> so uh someday you know like I, people are asking me about getting in a camera and getting this and get, there's no mail how do you get in anything you don't right so this is what i've got this is what i'm making do with and this is how it is so <laughs> i'm going to try later to see if i can do a little mini thing with tanya and uh work out a, a kink that i think i had okay everybody have a wonderful wonderful saturday and you know, in, in Guatemala, this is a day of fasting and prayer. Our president called last last week, like on Saturday or Sunday, for today to be a day of fasting and prayer. I'm not very good at fasting because my pitta gets a little overly ambitious, but I am good at prayer. So I'm gonna I'm gonna really keep that in my focus today, not just for us in Guatemala, but for everyone everywhere. Tomorrow's practice is going to be Babaji's fight face finish face fight finish we're going to get hopefully move out of the fear range because a lot of us and a lot of our friends are in fear right now so we're going to face fight finish okay love you kamalash real quick somebody just asked what your youtube channel is g hooven that's it